Good evening. It is town hall time. It is 8 o'clock on the East Coast here in New York City, where we remain in lockdown for yet another day of information that has come out about coronavirus. 25,000 new cases of the virus here in New York City. Uh, it is really the epicenter of what is happening nationally. So I'll give everybody a chance to get on and we will get started. If you are just joining us, we've been doing this for, I don't know, I've really lost count, close to maybe a week, uh, maybe almost a week, where it's a town hall where we share the new normal and we invite people to come in and tell their story. So we'll wait for a few more people to get on and then we'll go. I just fed Paddington, took him out to potty, and this is usually when he wants to play. So not exactly, not exactly the most convenient time, but that's okay. I got one arm to throw and the other arm to press the button to bring people in. All right, let's start here. I just got laid off thanks to coronavirus. Let's start. Yeah. Ah. Hello. Uh, Hello. I'm gonna say I can't say yes. I can't say no. I wanna say. Hello. Okay, so just a reminder, a very friendly reminder. If you don't want to comment and don't want to be brought in, don't press the button. I won't bring you in if you don't press the button. Don't press the button. Hi. Hi. What's your name? My name is Eunice Torres. Where are you in the world? I'm from Rincón, Puerto Rico. Aha! Uh -huh. What's the what's the new normal in Rincón? Well, this is a very busy town because it's very touristic and it's high season and it's a surfing town. Right. So everybody's dying to go surfing. Everybody's still surfing right now. No, they're dying to go surfing, but oh, yeah. the cops they close everything. Okay. Everything is closed, but actually. Um, I've been doing something that I really want to talk to you about it. I'm a teacher uh -huh. and I work for a homeschooling program here in town. And I also work for a program called Tops Makerspace here in town. So I'm doing, I'm doing uh, video conferences every day at 4 p.m. through Zoom. And we're doing science experiments with all, everybody, with every kid. And it's so much fun to see the kids every day asking me what materials they need. And they look for anything they have at home. And we do those uh, science experiments live. And it's so much fun. So I have to ask you a question. Virtually, do you see the teaching being any more effective this way? Actually, the kids, they need to see a teacher. They need to see a face. So it works if the kids see a teacher. They need to see someone familiar to them. The kids, they need to make that connection. Even online classes actually work. They really need to see a face. So the platform and classroom, Google Classroom and Zoom, they work amazing because they really need that contact. When they see me, they're like, teacher, Torres, and they're so happy and excited just to see but their teacher. Right, but I'm but I'm wondering, like, is there a point at which the kids are more focused doing it through Zoom? Because there's no other kids around them. It's just you and them. So they're not looking at their buddy who's maybe talking or do, do, like, is there a focus? Because I, I talked to a kid who said she feels like she's more focused at home doing it virtually than she is in the classroom. They are more focused. I have to admit it. That's true. But since I work for homeschooling program, we have small groups. They still have that focus, you know. It's very different when you have, like, big groups. Yeah. We work with small groups. It's very different. But like you said, definitely, when they work independently at home, it's very, very different. But they really miss the social part. Even they're used to use those cell phones, they miss to be with their friends. Especially yeah, here in Hong Kong. It's a very active town. It's surfing, skateboarding. The kids, they love to be, to be outside. Here in town, these kids are not into video games. Here, they're more into nature. They love to be outside. So for That's them, it's really That's... hard. Yeah, in Rincon, maybe a city the kids are very different. 
Yeah. Yes, they love to be in the beach. They love to be in the mountains. They love to be climbing. They love to be active. And for them, well, they're dying because of that. In our go ahead, love. Go ahead. In our education system, provides for that. I work for a school, so we include nature. We go to the beach. I teach photography, so walking around the school just to, you know, take pictures. So they miss. They do that. They're not those kids that they play video games. They're active. They love to be outdoors. Thoughts? Sounds like y'all got a cool program there in Rincon. That's great. Well, thanks for sharing it with us. I appreciate it. And nice to meet you. It is. Yeah, I think the Wi-Fi signal there was breaking up, but it lasted long enough because we got to hear what she was talking about, which was good, wasn't it? I never thought about that. Kids who live near the beach are probably not video game kids, right? They want to be at the beach. Hello, David. How are you? I'm well. What's your name? Louis from Queens. And the last time I spoke to you, I was at the gym at Planet Fitness in Queens. Oh, okay. Well, do you have, an, do you have an update? Our new normal. No gyms, of course. But the good thing is I started going back to gym in July of 2019. And like a couple of months later, I said, you know what? I'm going to do some workouts at home because you come home tired from work and you don't want to jump all the way into the gym. And I, I, that prepared me to do workouts at home now. Oh, good. So you're kind of yeah. accustomed to it. You got a program. Yeah, exactly. I have, I have to tell you, I'm going a little stir crazy because I can't go to the gym. <laughs> oh, like that, I know. That is, that's actually what's giving me a little bit of anxiety because I feel like exactly. I'm just sitting here at the, the house getting fat. Yeah. And I want to be like out exercising because it also like there's something about Definitely. sweating that just yeah. makes me yes. kind of feel more zen and everything. So my partner, Definitely. Jeremy, has actually been doing these workout classes on Facebook. And, right. You know, at first I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. But I might. <laughs> but that, there's a lot of good workouts on YouTube, especially, you know. Yeah. No, there are. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Good. Well, that's a um, you, you, you might have done. You might have done just what I needed to maybe <laughs> make me turn something on the TV tomorrow and work out. Uh, you, nice you can to, do it. Nice to talk to you again. Take care. Be good. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Mm-hmm. Because somebody's gonna ask, it's just water. Hey, hi again. Hi. Oh, God, we got some repeats tonight. You have an update? Yeah. Yes, we're uh, still working. Working. They announced that they're gonna pay us uh, a little extra uh, uh, at the end of April. So that is like something to hand there, but still scary to work. You know, to go to work. And even though we had the stress, well, in my case, I never have stress. I have a stress since Maria, and I have delivered, developed it. So yeah, I am working with that. All right, so you're gonna, get paid, you're gonna get paid through April. No, no, they're gonna uh, pay us a little extra in April. They say, the company say that. So. Oh, so they're not gonna pay you now, but they'll pay you extra when you come back to work. Okay, all right. So okay. It's, still, it's still scary, you know, go to yeah, work. Yeah, I because bet. Because my my workroom is close to Centro Medico. Oh. So, what do you, you do? Know, again? Remind me. I, I just uh, seller. Associate. What? Seller associate and Walgreens. At Walgreens? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, because being next to a medical facility, you know, you never know who you I might see. Contact. Every day I see uh, doctors, I see, you know. Patients. And, yeah, yeah patients, yeah. Older, yeah. older people. Is scary, you know. Is yeah, super scary. yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Okay. Well, thanks for checking back in. Yes. Thanks to tell you. I mean, I have a good night. Uh, he's. I know y'all keep saying show us the dog, but he is far too busy uh, with this ball. I just know he's. The last thing he wants me to do is pick pick him up and try and hold. It. Although, wait, I can point the phone down. Boom. There you go. There you go. They want to see you. 
Hello, hello, hello. What's your name? I love you. I love you. I love you. You are awesome. I mean, I am just, you are amazing. I have so much family in Puerto Rico and you are constantly updating and letting us know what's going on over there. Um, through all the, you know, anything that's going on. I look crazy. I don't think you were going to assess. You, you, do, you do not look crazy, but tell us your name. <laughs> My name is Joyce. And where I'm are here you in the home. world? Uh, New Jersey. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you for your kind words. I really appreciate it. Tell us about your new normal. Um, well, I'm privileged. I get to work from home, so we're okay there. My husband, unfortunately, is a, an essential, so he does work for FedEx. And Thank he's... God for him. Thank <laughs> Hallelujah for him. Yeah. My son also um, is an essential. He uh, He's a coffee technician, so he goes out to the Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts. He fixes coffee machines, so he's out there. Um, but he, you know, they're trying to use precaution and um, be as safe as possible and then come home every day, you know, disinfect the usual. We have, um, we're lucky none of our families are affected at this time that we know of. Okay. So it's great. That is a good thing. You know, they, New York City is a hot spot. So my concern is the hot spot continues to grow and grow and grow. The next thing you know, New Jersey has been looped into the hot spot in Connecticut. And, and that's not the case right now. But the, in the New York City metro area uh, is a hot spot. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not good. So um, it's a little nerve wracking to live here. But, you know, it's, it's very simple. If you're really worried, all you have to do is do what they say. You can't get it if you don't touch it. You can't get right. it if you don't come in contact with it. That's why we got to stay inside. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard to deal with the paranoia, sure. right? Of course, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But um, I feel like I would be more paranoid if I was walking outside. You know? Yeah. I mean, I did. Listen, I had to take the dog out. And so I walked by a Whole Foods tonight. And it was really cool because everybody was – I was like, it made me proud of people everybody was standing six feet apart and the line wrapped for i don't know maybe two or three blocks wow and i thought i thought really really good you gonna bark about that i thought that's a great thing you know that's a people, people, paddington paddington he has no manners right now uh, it's okay where, where's the ball um so i think it's good to see our fellow citizens, you know, look, people got to get out and about. They got to go to the grocery store, right? They can run out of food. Not everybody can have things. To, uh oh, did we lose her? No, I thought we lost you. So, yeah, it was just it was just good to see. And and I think the reason I'm talking about it, kind of in a little bit of awe, is because I have not gone out in eight days. This was the first time I went. Wow. Beyond my front, yeah, eight days. It's the first time in my life I've been cooped up for eight days. It's a little <laughs> unnerving, right? When you can't yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> when you're working and you're out there for 50 hours a week, yeah. you want to come home and you want to spend time at home with your family. Correct. But when you have no choice, yep. it's so difficult. That's right. You are <laughs> it's right difficult. about that. You're right but, about that. But, you know, I'm well, privileged, so I'm happy. And I'm so happy you selected me because I love you. If my mother knew this, <laughs> she would be like, beside herself oh, she so. absolutely adores you as well rosa quillas <laughs> hello hello miss rosa show her this video you can uh you can do a screen grab of the video with your phone or something and record okay let me do a screen it. grab <laughs> or show one of your tell one of your kids and they can actually record <laughs> i'll post this to my okay hold on a second i'm gonna take a screen grab ready hold on it didn't work I'm so nervous. This is crazy. <laughs> okay, hold on. Doing it again. Ben, just take a picture. Just use the top button. She is something. I'm going to do this right. I got it. Okay, now I'm ready for my screen grab. Did you get it? There you go. Yes! I got it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, good. my mother's absolutely nice. going to be ecstatic when she hears this. We all love you. I mean, I'm. 
Puerto Rican, my Puerto Rican family, are, they're all going to be like, oh my God, you spoke to him. You really spoke to him. So thank you for all your work, for all your constantly following up with everyone, all the officials over there trying to get help for our people. It is, it goes a long way. You are an angel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My I husband see, wants to say I hi too. All of that kindness. Thank you. Yep. Hello, I'm Ben. Hello, Ben. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. I'm trying to keep a dog from going crazy because the only person more cooped up than me is him. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they need to get out. They need to get out. But we're, we're good. We're good. How are, you, how are you doing with this new normal? I mean, you got to work, so you're still... And we thank you for delivering those packages. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we definitely do our best. Um, obviously, it's just essentials now, so... Yeah. Uh, things things have gotten a lot slower because of that. Uh, thank God for that. Do you but, uh, are you are you out and about on the truck with like gloves and a mask? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Yes. They 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 were able to give us uh, the N95 masks. Oh, great! So you got the real deal. Okay. Got the real deal. Yes, and uh, gloves. So um, it's working out. They're they're and doing their best to protect us, and we just have to do our best. cautious. Really, with your job, you don't have to come in contact with people, right? I mean, you can just drop them off at the front door and be on your way. Correct. Um, they moved on to no signature, so as so long as we get somebody's name, we can move on. Oh, wait, that, that's interesting. So because of this, you don't have to get a signature. Correct. Oh, they waived that. Oh, that's a little bit that, of news I didn't know about. I mean, as long as, they, as long as we can get someone's name. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's smart of FedEx. I, I didn't even think about that. It's funny the things that are affected when you go through something like this, you know, like getting a signature for the FedEx guy. And, Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for that essential service. In my mind, everybody who's still working right now who's an essential person is someone worth working. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And y'all have a, y'all have a nice, to, nice to meet you, sweetheart. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you again. You're an angel. We love you. I hope you and your family are safe as well. I didn't even ask everyone. My family, my family's good. My boyfriend's good. Everybody is, uh, we're not, we don't even have to do social distancing because we're not leaving the house. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I'm not doing the social distancing, although I should, but it's kind of hard when you have a hottie like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make him blush now. You're gonna make him blush. <laughs> but you guys are my favorite couple, by the way. Super oh, cute. You. you guys are adorable. It'll be nine years, October 1st. Oh, wow. wow. So I know. 28 years here. So 20, 28. 28. Yeah. Let me yeah. Tell you 28. Jesus. <laughs> Lord, you, I, let me tell you something. If I get to 28 years, I want more than like, you know, just the cake or whatever you do for anniversaries. I mean, that is, I, it, you know, look, relation, relationships are working. Jeremy and I's relationship has been. Um, I, I wouldn't say difficult, but it's been somewhat challenging because we've been apart for five years. So we haven't even lived together for five years. So that's difficult. Patty, yeah. Well, please stop. I got well to thank you. I thank, thank you, you for, for taking our um, FaceTime. We really appreciate it. Good You're luck welcome. with everything. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Nice talking with you. Nice talking to you too. Bye. Bye Joyce. What a sweet couple. Okay. Moving right along, moving right along. Right along, here we go. Paddington, are you gonna chill out? How many times do you wanna do this? David, what's up? Oh, Kent, how are you? Good, I just got done with the workout, so I look a little rough. Okay, so tell everybody who you are. Um, I'm Kent Lutzen, I am a reporter for a CBS affiliate in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, so tell everybody how we first met. So I, you know, came into contact with David when he was covering the Whitefish Energy scandal, I guess you could say, uh, out of Whitefish, Montana, because they got the contract to um, re, I guess, build the electric grid after Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, which was bizarre because there was a company of like two or three people at the time. So I, just so everybody knows, I had, I think I had gone back to New York and I was in New York or maybe I was in Puerto Rico. I don't know. I just remember they, no, 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 wrong. Time out. 
I remember, <laughs> this is a little behind the scenes <laughs> scoop for you. I was in Los Angeles and they okay. called and they said, you need to get to Whitefish, Montana for the evening news. And so we started looking at flights and I was like, well, we're not gonna make it. I mean, it's kind of a small, obscure place. It's a beautiful place. We're, it's not a major city. We're not gonna make it by tonight. And they said, we're gonna charter a plane. They chartered a plane. They chartered a plane. <laughs> Listen, it was so bizarre. I remember it was my it was October, um, and you were up in Whitefish, and I just like kind of got like starstruck a little bit because I mean you know when you're working in small markets, you look up to all these other big market people, and I was so pumped. And then I think you actually I requested through Newspath for you to give me a standard out cue. I remember that. I remember Back to that. because I was anchoring that night, so I felt pretty cool. <laughs> I remember that. Tell us about your. So you are now in Omaha, Nebraska, yeah? Yeah, I'm in Omaha. So I was working in Western Montana for two years, and then um, I just needed to get out of there. Not, I just was ready to, for a change. So um, I applied to a bunch of places, but the news director here in uh, Omaha reached out to me, and so it just seemed like a good fit to kind of just get a, a jump out of Missoula. So we've been talking about the new normal. What is yours? Um, so I wake up every day and still go to work and report and try to find stories, which is pretty easy right now. Um, and, you know, there's always something. We haven't quite started working from home yet. Um, so I show up to the newsroom at 4 a.m. And, you know, go in, turn, pitch my stories. And and one the, the, the thing is, is, my day hasn't changed that much. It's more of the technology aspect. I know you, you are like the, the king of social media and, you know, interviews via Skype and Zoom. And I'm having to learn how to interview people, not in person anymore, but over, you know, social media. So that's been a challenge. It's really changing our business. I have to tell you, I think our business will forever be different and things will not go back to the way they were when this pandemic passes, and it will. We're all in this together. Remember, we mm -hmm. will get through it. Uh, I want to ask you, you know, anyone living right now uh, has never been through a pandemic. I think that's pretty much accurate, right? So unless you were alive yeah. in 1918 for the flu uh, that killed, you know, millions of people, you, you, you haven't been through this. Uh, are you afraid? Do you, do you have any fears? I mean, you know, you don't live with your parents. You're out on your own. You're not a kid. You're out no, on your do you have fear? I, I do have a fear. Yeah, I do. I um, I would say that it's a legitimate fear to, to be living alone, especially, and then get this virus. And you know, you see all the time that it's just the most vulnerable people are the older people. But then you see people who are pretty young. I know you interviewed a young lady yesterday who was 26, yep, 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 and she yep. said she had to go to the hospital, and she luckily had a partner. It sounded like, but I live alone, and so. I check my temperature every day when I wake up and I oh, mean- Oh, you really? Wow, that's yeah. a new normal. Yeah, that's my new normal. And I, oh. I make sure, and you know, my coworkers and I, we all try to social distance, even though we still work in the same newsroom. And yeah. it's a real fear, I think, because of the unknown of it. Sure, sure. Listen, I, I hear you loud and clear. And tomorrow, tomorrow on CBS This Morning, I've got the story of a 27-year-old NYPD officer who has it, but her, her, her situation is unique, everybody, because she not only tested positive for COVID, her mother has it too, but get this, but get this, the 27 year old NYPD officer also has lupus and her lupus medication is the drug that they're testing to see if it will work for coronavirus. So wow. she's already on it. And now she just happens to be taking it and it looks like, he literally just bit me because he wants the ball. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I don't know where the ball is, Paddington. I don't know. It's gone. It's right here. So <laughs> yeah. So that that's interesting. And then you know, also tomorrow, just to give you guys a little um, a little preview of the show, we really want to focus on the success stories or, or the survivor stories, mm -hmm. right? And so we have two we have two good survivor stories tomorrow um, at. 8 a.m. So I'll be live at 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. tomorrow for what I what I love about CBS um, I've noticed is that they really do a great job of balancing the seriousness <laughs> of the pandemic as well as you know I noticed that they have always a nice feel good like hey look at these recovery stories this is the majority of people are like this and I think that's why I love CBS and I love everyone on there I 
it's so great and I aspire to be like you guys someday, so. Well, listen, I, here, here's the cool thing that makes me smile about what you're saying. I remember being you, dreams, following people who were there where I wanted to go. And, and, and I just wanna tell you that the journey and the dream is more exciting than the destination. Because yeah. the destination is like a finish line. You cross it, you're there, and you're like, okay, well, let's go get yeah. something to eat. The journey is the truly exciting part. So I want to I wanna tell you, I just, I'll, I'll leave you with this, just a couple of suggestions. Number one, always look for the balance. And the balance I'm talking about is the positive, right? Mm -hmm. Because especially at a time like this, people need not only hope, but they need proof of where people survived. And how yeah. did they survive? And what were they given? What were they not given? You know, tomorrow yeah. I'm going to tell you the story of an 87-year-old man who's a U.S. Marine who left the hospital in Puerto Rico today to go home. And when, you awesome. hear, and when you hear this man's five underlying conditions, you will say, good Lord, and he survived that? Yeah. Right? So you have to do that, that. And I work really hard at also, and this is another thing, in your stories, make sure you're always mindful of diversity. So when mm -hmm. I do a story and I interview three yeah. people, I don't want three white guys. Yeah. I don't want three black guys. I don't want three men. I don't want three women. I want, and I always try and bring a diverse audience. Because, and, and it, it used to be like, well, I couldn't find anybody. Well, then, yeah. then, then do better, right? right. Because yeah. it's not that there is no one that's more diverse or different. It's just that you hadn't found them. Yeah. So just be, be mindful of that because people see themselves in our stories, right? When they yeah. see someone who's gay, the gay kid goes, oh, I get him. When yeah. they see someone who is a, a black woman who's a trailblazer, they go, oh, I want to be her. When they see someone who's a, you know, what, every, everyone has a story that is relatable to the audience, you know? People so, want, and I, I, people want to be heard. I mean, uh, that's, you know that's my favorite saying. Oprah is says it? It. Everyone wants to be heard. They, they, everyone wants to know two things. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. And does what I have to say matter? Yeah. Okay. So I have a question for you. I'm listening. You, you cover a lot of natural disasters. And I yep. don't think I would consider this. Well, I guess it is a natural disaster in a way. How is this different? You can't really, you know, get in the ground and get right in there and report. You, you're, how is this different? It's different because I'm choosing to stay very far away from it. Right. And so yeah. usually... Usually, if I would be at a tornado or a hurricane, I would be where people are told not to be. Yeah. Um, not because we're not allowed to, or not because we're trying to break the rules, but because being in it gives people a sense of, of what it's like, right? So this is different because I'm making the conscious decision not to go into it. And, and I'll tell you for, for two reasons. Uh, number one, I, um, I don't want to be dramatic by saying this, but I'm afraid for my own safety. And number two, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. How am I going to sit here and tell you it's a ghost town in New York City if I open my blinds to look out on a beautiful night? How am I going to tell you that it's everybody's off the street and everybody's following the rule, but I'm going to go stand in Times Square? Like, yeah. it, it, just, it just doesn't make sense. Plus, I don't have the right protective equipment. Now, we've yeah. had conversations about going to the Javits Center, which is this gigantic center where Hillary Clinton was hoping to have her victory party and it wasn't to be yeah. and so they're turning that into a field hospital i really want to go in there i'm not going in there unless i have a full hazmat suit i don't blame you it's I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going and the company doesn't want me to so I, I'm, yeah. it's not like i'm putting my company on blast they are happy with me doing all my reporting from my home yeah. but at some point i would like to get out when i actually have something to show you yeah. but the the idea can't of just going to stand outside for the sake of being outside yeah, no, I find it difficult, too. It's something you think about when you're the only one on the sidewalk doing your live hit by yourself. And you're like, wait, maybe I shouldn't be out here right now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, well, Kent, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And listen, do me a favor. Send yeah. me a little bit of that hair to New York City. I'll give you my address. <laughs> I look, I just, I went, I'll show you a view here real quick before you go. I was like really bored. So I went and I ran those stairs over there. Um because I just needed to get out and get some energy. And I started, my mom, she's gonna be so pumped. I started this little, what are these called? Um, like a terranium, a, a plant thing. Okay. So that's my new normal is I found comfort in plants. <laughs>
You 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 are becoming an old man. I know. I'm a homebody, and now you're doing plans and everything. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Hey, Pitt, it's it's uh it's nice to hear from you. Congratulations. Yeah. Best of luck in uh, Omaha. All right. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Bye, David. Bye, bye. Oh, finally you chilled out. Okay, stay on the floor and chew it up, buddy. Okay, this lady has been waiting to get on. She said for a long, long time. So, let's see what she has to say. Maybe she can't come on. It says connecting, 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 connecting. Connecting, connecting. Yep, and it didn't work. Mm. So, Naomi, I know you are watching. It is not working. It said connecting, connecting, and then it said unable to join. Try the next one and see if it works. Hello. Hello, what is your name? My name is Kendra. Hi Kendra, where are you in the world? I am in Michigan. Okay, tell us your new normal. Um, my new normal is I am one of the lucky people who can work from home, so I'm able to do that. My husband already works from home for his business. Um, we have two little kids, a five-year-old and a two-year-old that are in our home from daycare and yeah. are super unsure as to why everybody's home and why they can't go to daycare and see their friends. Yeah. Um, it took is me the, about- Is the five-year-old old enough to ask questions like, mommy, what's going on? Or is he, something- he is and he understands that there's a lot of people out there who are sick and that we're home to try to make sure that we don't get sick like them. Okay. Um, he says his prayers every single night and every single night he's asking for everybody to get better. So, oh, you know, that breaks my Kendra. heart. Oh. And, you know, yesterday it took me a good 15 to 20 minutes to calm down my two-year-old who just wants to see her best friend that she sees every single day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, well, especially with someone that age, they depend on that, that ritual. You know, stand by yeah. for a second. Okay, I'm back. So more about the five-year-old or or just one more question. Does the information that he does have in his little brain about people are sick, does it lead to any fear that you see him exhibiting? Um, He is nervous, um, but I don't think it's to the point where he's afraid to go outside or he's afraid to, you know, get some fresh air. But he does understand that... um, washing our hands and and cleaning up after ourselves so you know it is instilling a lot of good things for him to do and and him to be cautious about and washing his hands yeah um but i do have to say my parents own a party store and they're still open and operating and i every single day pray that you know they stay safe and that people are coming in are you know just thank the people who are still behind the counters and you know, there to, you know, risking their lives to make sure that you have your food that you need or your cleaning products. Um, The nurses, my sister's a nurse, and they ran out of face masks. And she asked me if I can sew face masks for her because, you know, she's down to her last pair and she just doesn't know what she's going to do. So um, it's tough. um, But I'm, I'm hoping by staying put, you know, this does flatten the curve at some point because I'm I'm going to be working from home for the next three and a half weeks. 100%. I know that our company had to lay off a bunch of people because we just don't have, we can't, you know, we can't open up our doors. So it's, it's crazy to think how much has changed in such a short period of time. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, and my son's birthday was March 13th and he was so excited about it. We canceled everything because, you know, things were going a certain way that I didn't want you know, 30 plus people in my house that I, that none of us knew if they were carrying it. So, you know, and that's hard for a five-year-old when, you know, they're all excited for a birthday party and then he can't have one. So we're hoping to make it up, you know, in a couple months for him. You've, and you've, I'm fourth, go ahead. I, I am in um, my final year of grad school too. And they're talking about, they're canceling spring com- commencements. I'm graduating in December and there's a good possibility that I won't be able to walk. Um, 
you know, after doing all this schooling, everything's online and, you know, it's just completely changed my everyday life. Wow. Um, do, do you feel, do you feel a little bit better having said all of this to all of us? Is there, is there a little feeling of uh, cathartic, if you will? There is. I mean, my, Good. my anxiety is always through the roof with anything yeah. like this happening. Yeah. My husband tries to calm it down as much as he can, but you know, sometimes you just need to let it out. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And yeah. listen, for me, I'm not a, um, I mean, look, I talk about Oprah all the time. Everybody knows I, she's my sort of hero and shero. She journals and she's been journaling since, since she was 15. I'm not, a, um, I'm not a journaler because it just, it takes too much time and I don't like to write like that. And so I prefer this. Yeah. I'm an I'm a audio journaler, you know? I, I, so for me, hearing your story is good for me. And I think, I hope, and I, I think I can tell that you just sort of unloading that little bit may be may be good for you too yeah yeah and the fact i am training for a half marathon which they canceled so um but running is a real great stress reliever of um, course of course i just worry I, about my knees <laughs> yeah. i want my knees to work when i'm 60. yeah me too but <laughs> that's down the road that's down the road down the road but, but you know thank what? you for all that you do you know i really appreciate you know this type of interaction like it really kind of brings a little sense of normalcy to our crazy lives right now and i know for a lot of people you know it's you know just finding whatever works for us in this uncharted territory that is some of the best advice finding what works for yeah. us and what works for you may not work for me, but, but as long as we find our own little thing, it works. And the cool thing is coming on here and sharing a little bit about, about what works for us. Uh, right. So hearing, hearing you uh, makes what we're doing worth it. So thanks for weighing in. Yeah. Have a wonderful night. You too. Bye. Bye. That was nice. That was nice. Paddington. You did not get out. Oh, I thought you snuck out. Oh, oh Marcus. Hey, I didn't even know. I. How are you? Good. You didn't know you pressed the button. I did. That's okay. That's okay. I, let me um, get a spot where. How are you doing? I am doing very well. So we have been doing these town halls on Instagram where we've been talking about everybody's new normal. Uh, everyone, uh, I know Marcus from Sacramento, California. I used yeah. to live and work there. Marcus owned a restaurant. He now lives in the Napa area and he's a restaurant owner and sort of an entrepreneur and an all around cool guy. So tell us about your new normal. So we're here in Napa Valley and we are in shelter in place, but all the restaurants are doing takeout. Uh, it's a little bit different out here because we're in agriculture land. So we're our, um, a lot of farming and winemaking. So making wine is essential to, uh, to allow people to go in, uh, to their place of work. Uh, we just got a message that to be prepared that our schools are going to be opening on April 14th. Um, they've been out of school for, it feels like two and a half weeks, three weeks. So. It's interesting that that came out. Um, we'll see what that means. How old are your kids now? I have a senior in high school that's missing. Um, Porchoff is missing uh, <laughs> missing his varsity uh, baseball season. And then Micah's eighth grade going into freshman year. Well, wait a minute. Is there a chance that your senior doesn't graduate? Like, is he supposed to graduate in May? He's supposed to graduate in May. Um, I can't imagine them not graduating in the senior classes out there. Uh, they're going to be doing a lot of online courses. And yeah. uh, there is talk like if you do have a scholarship for sports, um, it kind of freezes right now because of, um, you know, they want your senior year performance and stuff. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Well, um, anything else you want to tell us? Any advice, any wisdom, any guidance? To stay positive, yeah. support your local businesses, um, come to Napa Valley when you can after vacation's mm -hmm. the best place to uh, visit. And you, you are, um, your trip is supposed to be coming out here hopefully in 
2021? Well, I, yeah, I mean, at this rate, but I actually want to try and make it this year. Jeremy and I talked about going to Napa. So um, when, when we go, we will definitely see. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're doing well. And I like watching these and listening. It's a lot of people from Puerto Rico. I've never um, been out there, but it sounds amazing. Oh, you got to go. You, you would absolutely love it. You'd absolutely love it. Beautiful and island. I, oh, I was going to say, and actually, just come on here to look at, Pan, what's your dog's name? Paddington. Paddington. <laughs> Paddington, who just went in his, his little pen, uh, which is plenty of room, but it, he, like, we have to, sometimes I cannot wind him down unless I put him in there and just like, let's take a break, you know, let's just take a break. Awesome. So, I feel like I have a kid, Marcus. I feel like I have a baby. Oh, you do. That's the, that is the prerequisite. That hey, don't you have someone, didn't you tell me you have someone who works for you who is Puerto Rican? Yeah, no, at Bouchon in Napa. I mean, in, in Yonville at Thomas Keller's restaurant. He okay. bartends at uh, Bouchon. And when we were talking, he lit up like, like you were, he just said that everyone trusts you out there and anything well, you say, people listen and here's the funny he wants to meet you. Here's here's the funny thing, because of how much time I've spent in Puerto Rico and and the love that I've developed for the island and the people, I kind of had this little game when I go around the country of like finding the Puerto Ricans because they are everywhere. I, it doesn't matter where I am. I can be in the middle of nowhere and there's a Puerto Rican. I can be <laughs> like airports, restaurants, hotels. They're all over the place. So, uh, I I could imagine. Well, you're doing great things for them. I uh, you put them on the map for people that are terrible with geography. And now I know that uh, they need a support like everybody else. I bet you know Puerto Rico more. I bet you know more about Puerto Rico because of this than you did before, right? Oh my gosh, 100%. Like, See, that's awesome. I mean, that's awesome. From that hur first hurricane to everything. I mean, I, yeah. That's awesome. The surf communities to every, like all of it. And then when I meet someone from Puerto Rico, they just have such a passion and love for that kind of, for their their place. Um, it's amazing. They sure do. They are they are proud proud people of where they came from, who they are. So anyway, like listen, listen, listen I I haven't seen you in so long. It's good to see you. Good to talk. I know. Well, I'm glad uh, you're doing well and um, keep up the great work. All right. Thanks. Bye, Marcus. <laughs> Bye. All right. That was cool to kind of have some drop ins that are blast from the past, right? That was kind of cool. Okay. Do, do, do. Professor Tina. Hey there. Hi, what's your name? My name is Christina. Christina, okay. And we Where actually spoke the other night. Oh. I think um, maybe three days ago, a Wednesday or something. Okay, well, do you have an update? Well, I do. Um, I actually left to Florida. My parents are in Florida, and they're actually making a lot of big deals about, you know, being in New York, New Jersey, coming down south. So I actually made it before they're restricting uh, people coming over here. Okay. So. That's pretty interesting. Um, my whole drive coming, I was just very mindful about the gas pumps and using Clorox wipes Good. to pump my gas. Good. Um, now, where, my, did you, where did you come from to Florida? Um, from New Jersey. Oh, interesting. Okay. New Jersey. But, you know, they, um, they said today that anyone going, anyone leaving New York State, yes, particularly New York City, should self-quarantine for 14 days. No matter where you go in the United States, right. you should self-quarantine for 14 days because New York is such a hot spot and, and they're is. treating it as if everyone walking around is infected with the virus. Right, and I was, I mean, I'm originally from Brooklyn. Um, okay. I moved to South Jersey about a year and change ago. Okay. And um, so my family, my brother, he's actually still in healthcare and his job is still open. and. They have cases on Friday, which I'm pretty surprised that, you know, they're still electing to do these cases that are elected cases. He works at a surgery center, not a hospital. Um, so I, I don't know if people are really taking it seriously enough, you know, because I feel that there are certain, certain fields that could really prevent, 
you know, these exposures. Um, I just found out two of my family members actually have uh, COVID and, okay. you know, yeah. And, and okay. thankfully they're, they're fine. Um, they're recovering, Good. but you know, they said that their symptoms are pretty bad. I mean, not to the extent that they were hospitalized or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of family in healthcare. I'm in healthcare myself. I work at a hospital in South Jersey. Um, every, so I'm, I'm one of the fortunates that I'm working from home, yeah. but I get, you know, the daily updates and it, you kind of feel, uh, helpless and useless because, you know, I'm, I'm used to being frontline. Um, but my, I have a nine year old. So now I'm also a teacher <laughs> for my child. So a lot of people are asking me, are you going to self isolate? Well, I am. Okay. So you're, you're, you're in self quarantine. Yes. Okay, fine. All right. So, okay. So and you basically got out of Jersey because you wanted to get away from it. Yep. Yeah. But, and, and, but, but, but you, and where are you in Florida? I'm in Tampa. Okay. I got some cases in Tampa, right? Yeah. 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 But I, I really haven't been outside or anything since I've been here. Um, so I got here <laughs> Wednesday. Um, I was in New York City, you know, when I went to pick my son up. Um, when everything first kind of started, I went to drop him off because I have family there. Yeah. Um, picked him up, took him home, you know, and then decided on, I came, I got here Monday morning. Wow. So you drove all the way down there. Yeah. Yeah. Long drive. Well, thank yeah. you for updating us. Good luck in Tampa. Stay in that quarantine for yourself yes. and your others. Yes, for sure. All right, love. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. No way. Cedric, we are back. Yes, way. Hi, my name is Ian. I'm uh, from Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico. I didn't right. think you were going to accept my call. That's cool. Hi, Hi Ian. I, I accepted it. I accept hey. you. Uh, what is your new normal? Um, I usually stay at home. Um, I do go to school. I'm at uh, University of Puerto Rico. I'm in my fifth year. And uh, I usually like to stay at home, but I've been the one doing the... Uh, buying stuff and um, that's weird for me because I usually stay at home and uh, in my bed. Um, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's fun. I like it. I, um, I saw you once at the, uh, uh, at my fest station at the, uh, where we get Rosario. I think I touched like your bag or something. I was like, Oh, thank you. And that's it. And, uh, yeah, I didn't want to waste your time. And, uh, no, it's pretty cool. I'm cooking something, and I think I gotta throw cooking? it away. What are you cooking? Some shrimp, and I gotta throw it away. Oh my god! Yeah, I gotta throw it away. Why are you throwing it away? Because I forgot to buy um, the aceite. <laughs> I forgot to buy uh, yeah, the oil. So it, I think I got some oil, but I'll fix it. See you guys later. Have a good night. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> Let's see if I can fix this. All right, man. Thank you. Bye screwing up shrimp man shrimp is good eating don't be messing up shrimp all right let's see put butter someone says gosh y'all don't want to see me cook oh y'all want to know something funny i scrambled an egg for the first time a week ago Hi. Hi. What is your name? I'm here from Puerto Rico. Hi. What is your name? Alejandro. Alejandro. Where are you in Puerto Rico? I'm in Villalba. It's right in the, in the center of Puerto Rico. Villalba. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, you have a oh big God, smile amazing. on your face. <laughs> yes. I mean, thank you for, for all the, the job that you do here in Puerto Rico. And I'm pretty happy that we have that, that voice in the in the in the united states so thank you for that you are most welcome tell us about your new normal alejandro well uh, my new normal is having class uh, online i'm from the university of puerto rico so the online classes are very tricky but i'm getting the the, the face of it what are you studying history do you of the americas history of the americas 
Yeah. Do you find yourself to be more focused online than you would be in a classroom with other people? Well, although I miss that contact with the professors, I I tend to to think that they are giving us more job more jobs because the 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 class is more they they're giving more more things to do. But I think it's very very useful that the platforms although not all the professors know how to use them. Right. Right. What do you want to yes, be when you grow up? Well, I I I I'm starting my career uh, uh history now, but I'm uh, um I decided to run for oh my god. Um uh, legislador municipal of my of Ibonito is a political um um uh, uh how do you say uh, <laughs> Este, it's like in the municipality of Aibonito, it's the, the mayor and the legislatura municipal. And like, I, like ran, a, I am like running a city, for the legislature. Like a city Aibonito. council? Uh-huh, yes. Okay. So I, I think the only way to change things is being part of the politics of our country. Right. And that's why, why I'm running for that. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to give you an emoji. I haven't done this before. Watch this. Yeah, why am I getting the sun? I don't want the sun. There you go. That's just for you. I bonito assemblyman. That's how you say it. That's just that's just for you. Listen, I, I gave you. Ah, oh, thank you. I gave you the clapping emojis because there are a lot of people, Alejandro, who complain and want things to be different, but they aren't willing to go and vote. And the only thing you can do better than voting is actually become a change agent, a policy maker, an elected official. Uh, the island needs it and they need a lot of young people. So uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you, thank you for that. And all, for all the viewers, if you don't have your tarjeta electoral, go ahead and do it now because if you don't vote, you, you, you don't have, we're gonna, you're, you're not gonna have a change. And the only way to do it is voting and being part of the movement of the youth and all, all people around the country that deserve more. We deserve more than what we have now. You do, Alejandro. I am so glad we got to hear from you tonight. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Good night. Oh, that's really cool. That is really cool. Y'all are funny in that comment section. Y'all having your own little conversation there. There's like the conversation going on here, and then there's a the conversation going on there. I love it. <laughs> wait, what's happening at nine o'clock? People are clapping? Wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute, time out. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm trying to figure out what people are writing in the comments section. Are they clapping in Puerto Rico? I don't know. Somebody's writing that they're clapping at nine o'clock in Puerto Rico for the healthcare workers, clapping at 9 p.m. Okay, well, listen, y'all, if they're doing that, please y'all record it at 9 p.m. Y'all report, y'all record the, the, the clapping and send it to me and, and I'll share it. In fact, here's what you can do. If you record the clapping, share it on your Instagram story and tag me and I'll tag you guys. Hi, what's your name? Tanya. And where are you in the world? Um, Montgomery, New York. Okay. What about so, you? Orange what's County? Your, what is your new normal level? I am a vocational instructor. Okay. Um, so I'm a registered nurse by trade. Okay. And I teach at uh, BOCES, which is a vocational school, uh -huh. uh, to high schoolers. Okay. So my new norm is remote teaching. Okay. And I have to tell you, for all the teachers out there who have never done this, what a world. Um, difficult. Trying to get to students who don't have access. Um, and I'm just going to speak to myself, who I do vocational. It's hands-on training. How am I supposed to do hands-on training to, for students who are going to get certified? Um, very difficult. Mm. So, you know, we do what we can. Um, I have to show how to give bed baths. And I don't have mannequins. So I'm trying to have, like, my kids and my husband lay on the bed and doing videotapes and uploading them. Um, but really, really, really hard. As you know, New York has been the epicenter of this horrible coronavirus. So 
we're stuck in the house. Um, my husband's a retired state police. And um, so he's home. And my boys, I have a junior in college. He's home. And I have a junior in high school. And he's home. And it's all remote learning. And I have to tell you, it's a lot for the kids. I, um, my one son in high school comes up to me the other day and says, Mom, um, I've gotten 20 emails from teachers. And I don't know where to even start. So it's tough. It's hard. Um, life is just, it's hard. I don't even know what to say. I didn't think about the vocational folks, the hands-on people, the practicals. Yeah. I didn't, I, did, I didn't think about that. And there's a lot. Yeah. What are you going to do? Of course. Of course. Wow. You know, and we have to be careful. We, you know, we're, we're trying to do our best and, you know, we have our administrator saying, just be careful. They can't do things at home because you're not watching them. So you have to, when you do videos, just tell them, please don't do this at home, but this is how you would do it. <laughs> so yeah. What do you do? How do you, what test, do you do? How do you test them for something that's practical? I don't know. <laughs> this is what's new to us. I literally said, so I have a class of 20. I literally said I would have to probably do five at a pop because I use WebEx or Zoom. Um, I would do five at a pop, and I would have to say, you five, let me see you do it. Um, but again, you have to be careful. I don't know the environment. I don't know what they're really using. It's, it's hard. So vocational, I have to tell you, the academic portion is easy. I can upload anything. Any teacher can upload things. We can grade things. But like you were just saying, vocational, a whole different world. Whole different world. Oh, I tell you what, I am sure glad we heard from you because, you know, I've been telling everybody what I love about this. Do you know what I love about this, thanks to you, is I'm more aware. I'm more aware. And that's I'm glad. the beauty of bringing everybody together. I agree with you. That's the beauty of bringing everyone together because as far as I'm concerned, Virtual is fantastic. I agree. Until you hear your story and you yep. go, oh, what do I do? There's those people. There's those mm -hmm. people who are dealing with that. Mm -hmm. wow. And I have students messaging me, you know, Mrs. Mendez, you know, what are we going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying my best. Yeah. We all are trying our best. Hey, guess what? But that's a good answer. Yes. That's, a, that's a good answer. Yes. I'm, a big, I'm a big believer in if I don't know is the right answer. Tell people I don't know. Mm -hmm. Tell people I don't know. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out it's a good answer, too. Right? And, I, and you're absolutely right, and I like that. You have to be honest. Yes. Don't sugarcoat it. There's no, no need to sugarcoat because anything. Because here's what I've learned. If you give them some answer that doesn't turn out to be the truth, they will learn that from you. And in turn, the next time you ask them something, they will kind of on the spot concoct something. Right? Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. know is a very good answer. Yep. In fact, I agree. The older I get, I've had to sort of settle into being relaxed enough to say I don't know. Because when you say I don't know, it kind of hits your ego, right? right. It's like yeah. those people who are smart, like always know. Exactly. And so to say I don't know is a bit of a hit to your ego. No, to say I don't know is being vulnerably honest. And you know what you follow it up with? I don't know but let me try and find an answer. Absolutely. You know how many times I tell people that on here? Yeah. You know how many times people come to me with something and I go, I have no clue, but I'm on it. My yep. favorite phrase is, I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah, very good. So um, just to let you know, thank you so much for this. My parents live in Puerto Rico. Yeah. They live, they live in Aguadilla. So, um, uh, yeah. been, yep, been over there since all the, earth, um, the earthquakes and all. I just spoke to mom now. Yeah. They're all in the house as well, um, but thank goodness they're doing okay. They did stop flights to Awadilla starting today. They did. That is yes. correct. So just to be clear, everybody, the only place the commercial flights are in San Juan and arriving from is San Juan. Yes, because they even stopped it in Ponce. They stopped all flights. I think only cargo was allowed to go over there. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. So. But thank, thank you, you, David. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And um, are you going to make it work? I have no doubt. You yes. You know what? You I have faith in everyone. You, so you, you we'll you make it work. We'll get through all this. You going to make it work. Little, little, little mountains to climb, but we'll do it. Thanks. Thanks for. Waiting. Alrighty. Love hearing okay. you. Take thank care. You. Good night. Bye. -bye. Good night.
Okay, so I think the Instagram police are around the corner, 907. So here's what we're going to do. I need to track a piece for the evening news. So, uh, evening news, morning news. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do that and then come right back on. So I'll probably be back on at 920.